what's up welcome back to another video unless you're new here then hi my name is Miranda and welcome to my channel I hope you consider subscribing stick around and of course check out the playlist that I have linked below of all my extreme grocery challenges and meal ideas so if you are new here just a little bit of background on us really really quickly we as in my husband and I myself are on a journey to becoming 100% debt free we currently budget for $30 a week for groceries for just the two of us every so often probably once or twice a month I throw in an extreme grocery challenge just to see how far I can stretch our grocery budget this week we are eating for a dollar a day since there's two of us the total spent was less than $14 so if it's just one person in your household if it's just you you could stretch this entire meal plan to last you two weeks if you have more than two people in your house you could add a few extra items but the nice thing is is because if you have more people it might actually cost you less per person because buying in bulk is always cheaper I do want to add really quickly if you're someone who is struggling with food insecurity and you don't have the food that your family needs and you clicked on this video i really highly encourage you to call 211 211 is a phenomenal resource here in the u.s that will help link you up with the food pantries in your area do not be afraid to ask for help if you need help so make sure to call 211 it's like i said it's an amazing resource and everybody needs to use it my husband and i do make sure to donate to our local food pantries every single week just because our food budget is really really low we do work that into our personal budget because it's really important to us to give back. Any of the recipes are found in the description box below today, plus my full grocery list, so that way you have all the resources you need from me. But let's jump in. I'm gonna show you my grocery haul, my meal prep, and everything that we ate this week, spending $14 eating for a dollar a day. All right, here's my little Winco haul. Let me show you what I got, and then I will also show you the receipt. So I did get five pounds of Yukon gold potatoes, um, three pounds of zucchini. Don't worry about the bag. I reuse that to scoop dog poop later in the week. A pound of black beans, a pound of lentils, three packets of yeast. Yes, I know the brick of yeast is way cheaper. If you want to go that route, go ahead. When I do these extreme budget videos, I do the active yeast just to stay within the budget that I've picked for the week to make things fair. One can of corn, Two cans of tomato paste. These are the larger ones, the 12 ounce size. So two cans of those. A large pack of flour. You can get any kind of flour you like. And then I also got two containers of pasta. So let me show you my receipt. Here's the little haul. And then I will also show you what we're making for the week and how I am prepping for the week ahead. So here's the receipt, $12.92 out of the $14 budget I set. So I definitely have $1.08 if I wanna go back and buy one more thing or two more things. But let me show you next what I'm making for the week. Here is the very simple bread recipe that I share all the time here on my channel. I got this idea from Frugal Fit Mom and I have literally used it for so many things. I've used it for crunchy bread, garlic knots, now tortillas, pizza dough. I usually use the same thing over and over and over and over. So I'm just sharing with you really quick the very simple recipe that I continue to tweak to make different bread products. So it's three cups of flour, one half cups of warm water, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of yeast. Now, I made this multiple times this week. I made two loaves of bread, three batches of tortillas, and then almost made a pizza crust, but then decided, no, I'm just gonna stick with the tortillas. So I will leave the recipe below, and then the tweaks that I made for the tortillas because it was a little bit different. But that one pack of flour stretched so far throughout the week. So here's what the dough looks like. You do cover it um, for 12 to 24 hours, and then I'm going to actually roll it out and make tortillas. And the one tweak for this tortilla recipe in comparison to the actual bread recipe, it was a little less water and a little more yeast. I'm pretty sure you could probably just do the actual bread recipe, but I was looking for an oil-free tortilla on Pinterest and I came across so many, like literally there are so many different kinds. Leave me a comment below if you make your own tortillas because a lot of people here on my channel tell me that they do. I don't know if these are necessarily tortillas or non bread. I don't know. I left out the sugar component because one, I don't have sugar in my house. Two, I didn't buy sugar. But the original recipe did call for sugar, but I didn't 
add that. So I split my tortillas up into little um, dough balls and then I rolled them out with a lot of flour. And the one thing the recipe said is that you're gonna need a lot of flour because they get a little bit sticky. This was definitely a labor of love. They were super delicious, hence why I made three um, series of these this week because it was so good. So you do put on a medium high heat, ignore my range. I had a really crazy busy week and I did not clean it normally my range is it looks like I live in a house that has a dirty range. So the tortilla recipe on Pinterest said that you had to basically steam the tortilla in a hot skillet with a little bit of water. And then after you did so to each side for a minute or two, you were supposed to either cook it in the oven or on an open flame. Now I have a um, gas stove and we do use the open flame a lot because we were shown by my uncle and aunt how to roast a tortilla on an open flame so I make sure to do that as often as I can so I did steam these or par cook these I'm not even actually sure of the actual term that Pinterest used but using a tongs I just kind of like is sat for a minute or two, let them cook, let the water cook down, see how, kind of eyeballed it, what I was going for. I kind of got the idea that it kind of got a little bit dry, a little bit cooked. If you work a lot with bread products, you would know the look that it was going for. Um, kind of like this, it's kind of dry, it's, it's kind of cooked a little bit, but it's not quite there. And then I put it on an open flame. And then I cooked it for a minute or two on each side, just kind of depending on how I wanted it to look. Some were more done, some were less done. Like I said, it was more like a non bread. Some of them got a little bit crunchy, but I loved them. I made 65 of these this week, so I definitely loved them. And I had a little station going, which was really fun. Like I said, it's a labor of love, but so worth it if you like homemade tortillas. Hopefully I don't burn my house down while, while trying one of these tortillas. Um, I'm just gonna flip this one real quick. I thought I'd try one. They smell really good. I'm curious, they're kind of like, they remind me of naan bread. Mmm, okay. I can get down with that. You guys should make these. This is definitely a labor of love. You can also put them in the oven. I decided to go this way because I have nothing else to do with my life. Then just sit here and make tortillas for, it's like 30 minutes worth of work. It's really not that bad. Definitely recommend it. I wanted to show you really quickly how I was making my lentils. I did do my black beans in the Instant Pot as well. And then I did put potatoes into the oven. I'll show you that here in a minute. But I just put lentils, water, and I left the zucchini out on the side because I didn't want it to get like demolished in the Instant Pot. I just popped it in there, six cups of water, my whole pack of rinsed lentils, and I popped it in there with a third of a can of the tomato paste for 30 minutes. I wanted to show you really quickly what I have finished. So I did some of my potatoes, not all of my potatoes, and I roasted these in my oven because I had it on for another recipe. Um, I ended up making 21 tortillas, I ate one. Um, and then the can of black beans, or the bag of black beans, one pound of black beans. This is for my lentils. I'll finish those up and then show them to you. But I wanted to show you this really quick because I am going to make some breakfast tacos using the black beans, the potatoes, and the tortillas. And I wanted to put those together and I'm gonna make some for meal prep this week. I wanted to share that with you just to show you what I had already done. And this took me about an hour. Obviously the potatoes, I did nothing. I just threw those in the oven. This I just throw in my Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can definitely use stove top. Um, those took the majority of the time but I've been working on that and the lentils for a little while. So really an hour to invest and have all of this done for the week is so easy to me. So when I go to make meals throughout the week, I just pull out the containers I need, throw it all together, and I have a quick easy meal in like 15 minutes. I did go ahead and prep a few of the breakfast tacos for the week, so I included this in my prep portion, but I will also put on the screen and the, in the description box below how many meals everything made so that way you have an idea and then kind of the portion sizes. So the only vegetable yes that I bought is zucchini and I wound up going back to the store and buying about three more pounds because it was like 69 cents a pound and I did have a little bit more money to spend. And the only seasonings you will see here are garlic salt, sea salt, and Italian seasoning. That's it. You can add anything else you want to. I try to just stick to the bare minimum seasonings so that way you guys don't feel like you have to go buy a whole bunch of seasonings and then like oh my gosh she said she spent a dollar a day but then that's not including all the extras so super super basic you don't have to use any of those seasonings you can just have your food taste like food if you want so for the breakfast tacos I did make a lot of the bean and zucchini mixture ahead of time and then I cut up potatoes and put those into the tortilla 
and it was delicious. My husband loved these. He said he would have these more often if I was willing to make the tortillas. You could add hot sauce, barbecue sauce, you could add avocado, you could add um, peppers and onions. You can really bulk up this meal if you want to. I like to say that my recipes are kind of like the base recipe, kind of where you can enhance it if you want to. Super simple, super easy. If you like whole food plant-based, you'll find all these recipes to be really, really enjoyable. And if you're not whole food plant-based, maybe you wanna add a meatless meal in here or there and these will give you some ideas. So I went ahead and prepped three extra and then that was the one meal that we had for this night. And then I had some extra beans. So then all I had to do is put the meals together throughout the week because I live a very, very busy life and I like to have things ready to grab and go. The other thing that I prepped ahead for the week was bread. I made two loaves of bread this week, which was plenty for the two of us for meals. So this bread recipe is so incredibly easy. I feel like everybody can make it, even if you've never made bread before. So turn your oven on to 400, pop the pan in there to preheat, get your dough ready, let it sit for eight, 12, 24 hours, um, whatever. You can literally let it sit forever. It just, it's luscious every time. I put it on my counter, I kind of roll it in a little bit of flour, I pop it in that hot pan as soon as the oven's preheated. Since I don't have a Dutch oven, I do a double pan style, so I put another loaf pan on top of it. If you have a Dutch oven, you can put the lid on top. If you don't have either of these things, use a glass baking dish and then just make a tent with um, aluminum foil. I put it in the top rack, in the middle, and I let it bake for 30 minutes. When 30 minutes is up, I take it out, I take the top um, lid off of it, and I put it back in the oven for 15 minutes. Now, if you don't want super crunchy bread, I would not put it back in for 15 minutes, maybe like 10, 11, 12, but I love it every single time, and my husband loves it, and look how beautiful this is. It's so good. It is crunchy on the outside, but I think the next day after you let it sit in the refrigerator for a little while, it's less crunchy, and we always toast it the next day, and we love it, absolutely love it. On this night for dinner, I made some homemade spaghetti sauce and then put that fettuccine into some boiling water and served it with some bread and it was so good. I did mean to add zucchini to this meal and I totally forgot, but I used um, two thirds of a can of tomato paste and then about a recycled pasta sauce jar and a half of water. You can make it thicker or thinner if you wanted to. I made it thin for a reason because I was trying to stretch it. You could also add cornstarch, thicken it up. I meant to add zucchini in there and thicken it up because I was going to do shredded zucchini. Totally forgot. It was a long day. I know I keep saying that. But like I said, I used Italian seasoning, garlic salt, and sea salt, and that's all I used. If you don't have those on hand, that's okay. But especially for the um, like the tomato paste to kind of reconcentrate it and make it into a sauce, I did add the seasonings. So you're just gonna let that simmer and then you're gonna put it on top of your fettuccine. Another night, another dinner. I just got done running and I'm making the spaghetti sauce and spaghetti. And I just wanted to add really quickly, I'm not putting lentils with this meal. You absolutely could. I might add some to my plate. I know my husband doesn't love spaghetti sauce with lentils on spaghetti. He typically just likes spaghetti with red sauce. So that's what I'm making for him. I might throw some lentils on it. You could definitely throw some lentils at a protein a little bit, add the nutrients up a little bit, completely up to you. There are plenty of lentils on hand, so you could definitely add lentils. Here is the spaghetti meal, and this ended up being about five total portions instead of eight, which is a typical pack of spaghetti or fettuccine or pasta, and then the leftover sauce. So I have three meals to take with me for lunch. The one with the red sauce is my husband's, so that way he can have that, and then I'll put lentils over mine. And then I didn't add lentils to his, but I did to mine, and then some bread on the side. So I didn't already say this, but for us, what works really, really well, if you're not new here, you know this by now, is that I make large dinners and then we take the portions, like the leftover portions for lunches because I'm so busy. I don't have time to make breakfast every day, lunch every day, and dinner every day. I also don't mind leftovers. I don't mind eating the same thing over and over and over. So in this you know, week of meals, I'm making a large dinner and then there's multiple leftovers for lunches. It works for us. If you want to do something differently, you totally can, but it also helps to be more budget conscious. When you are sticking to a really strict budget or you know, creating different meals, you don't have the luxury to have something different at every single meal. It's really impossible because literally, if you look at my grocery list, I bought like 
less than 10 items. So I don't have, you know, a lot of things to move around. Now I could have made a lentil soup. I could have definitely put the lentils on top of potatoes. I could have added potatoes to the soup. I could have done more things, but in my mind, it just works so much easier if I just do like five or six big meals and then we eat that throughout the week. So that way, if you know, lunch comes and I'm like, man, I really want some more red sauce and noodles or hey, I want some taco soup. It works really well. So this, as you can see, is a taco soup, as I'm calling it. It's corn, zucchini. Um, I used, again, tomato paste, and I added in a bunch of black beans and a pack of noodles, and this made so much soup. I put down below as eight servings, but honestly, it could easily feed 12. There was so much soup. This is a really big pot. I like to really push my pots, as people like to say in my comments, like, how much food I can cook in them. But this was really good. You could also add more liquid and stretch it out if you want to. And then another really quick dinner. Towards the end of the week, once everything's like made and in the fridge, I really just like to take a breather from cooking. And I made lentil sloppy joes and so good. This bread is really good toasted. It's my favorite way to have bread. Um, it's just delicious. And then I just added some of the lentils that were cooked in the tomato paste. And then I added a little bit of garlic salt to them. And then they, of course, had the zucchinis in them as well. And then I poured on top the marinara sauce that I made. Like I said, if you want a thicker marinara, you can have a thicker marinara. My husband likes thick marinara, and I think I like thin marinara. I don't know. But they're open-faced sloppy joes, and I ate them with a fork. They were so good. This is probably going to become like a staple for us since we do buy a lot of lentils. I know some of you say that lentils bother your stomach. You could substitute a bean for this. You could do um, like a, a meat substitute if you wanted, but it's so delicious. This was just, I, I love this meal. This is my favorite meal of the entire week. So it was awesome. And then the very last thing is I made a lentil taco because I really, really love these weird tortilla things that I made. I don't know, maybe they're just flatbreads, but I just took some of the leftover lentils, popped over the top. Um, I kind of wish I would have saved some of the corn out for these. That would have been really good. And then I also took um, that leftover soup and put it in a potato one night, which I forgot to show you. But this was really delicious. If you have hot sauce, or barbecue or you want to add some more of the marinara on top you could add onions or lettuce or vegan sour cream this is really just a base and you can do so many things with it but it's really good I want to quickly say thank you so much for watching today's video I hope you gave it a thumbs up you subscribed if you're not already and make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Miranda running on plans but I will see you in my next video have an awesome day bye